Uh, this is question two of the 2020 Waves exam. Sweet ass. Question two. Um, James and Tara take two portable speakers. Oh, look at that. They haven't changed the wave speed. Sometimes they do that in exams, and that's diabolical. Um, anyway, um, speakers out at school field, place them 1.25 meters per sibar apart. So this is D, and that equation uh, was it M lambda equals D sine theta. Oh, I hope I've remembered that correctly. Um, yeah, it is. Um, I don't actually have the formula shit with me. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you can read that. They walk along the line AB, so they walk along this line, parallel to the speakers, 20 meters away, so this is L for you guys. Um, in the formula, I'll just write it now actually, N lambda equals D sine theta. Um, they notice a, a regular series of loud and quiet spots along the line and decide to investigate the pattern. Um, and this formula can also be written with sine theta sine theta is approximately equal to, uh, was it x over l? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite being this would be x, and the hypotenuse, this would be l. And you can look up Khan Academy, the derivation of Snell's, uh, was this not Snell's law? Uh, 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 double slow interference. Right, calculate the angle theta that Tara makes with the central line. So we're just gonna rearrange this formula here. Um, n lambda over d would have equaled sine theta, but what's the opposite of sine? Opposite sine, it's called sine inverse, but I like to call it opposite sine some days. Um, and that equals theta, so essentially, so this is, oh, this is a calculate, so I don't even need to do, the, I'll do the actual writing out everything. Um, just see, no, what's this? So Tara is at the first, where the heck is Tara? Is she at the antinode or the node? Tara stands on the first adjacent loud spot. So sweet, she's at n equals one. So she's where the path difference of this speaker to this speaker, the little waves will travel to there. It's the path difference of one wave. So n equals one. So we've got one. She's what's the wavelength? Don't tell me I have to calculate that. Uh, I totally have to calculate the wavelength. That's just rude. Right, this is right. Let's just calculate um, the wavelength equals velocity over frequency. I'll just quickly do that now. Right, so we've got a wavelength of 1.36 meters. Hold on, wait. 340 over 250. Sure, hold on. I'll do it actually. I've got it. 3.4 e to the 2 over 2.5 e to the 3. So this is why you should have the answers in front of you. This way you shouldn't do it like I did it. Um, always try and type them out. Even if you've been teaching physics for like seven years, you still get lazy and just forget. Um, meters. Right. Benefits of having the answers right in front of you and not making silly mistakes. Um, 1 times one point, uh, 0 0.136 over the separation distance is 1.25. We make sure our calculator is in degrees. Shift set up. Oh, whoops. Shift set up. Sweet, it's in degrees. Right, let's calculate that. And that gives me 6.24. Well, let's go square it. 6.2. All oh, right. Fully unrounded first, two, four, six, one uh, degrees. So theta down here equals six point, uh, we'll just double check, three, three, cool. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, everything's in three SF. Uh, two, five degrees. Um, you would have, I would have picked this, the mistake up of it being 1.36 because you can't have an opposite large in the high bottom news. But even then, still be me, me being lazy. Right, the distance between A and B is 10 meters. Where the hell is A and B? Oh, here. A and B is 10 meters. There we go. Um, calculate the total number of loud spots the students could hear along this line while both speakers are producing the same frequency of 2.5 times 10 to the 3 hertz. Do we totally just figure out the same suite? So this is uh, lambda equals 0 0.136. Um, for some reason I thought this was an like excellence question from a few years ago. Ah, oh, now that's with light. And they had to figure out which color it was would give the best, uh, or not the best, the most spots. Right, so let's just, I don't know if this is symmetrical or not, but I can't be bothered to check. Um, 
I'm going to assume this is five. I'm going to split the question up and have five from one side, and then I'll just like symmetrically double it for the other side, and then add the one in the middle because it doesn't count. Um, I hope that meant, you know what I mean. Right, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what the phase difference is at A or B, and that's going to be five. So, shit, what am I doing? I'm going to rearrange for N. So when N is equal to, uh, what is it? D sine, oh wait, I'm not going to use sine theta. I'm going to use X over L. Uh, wait, uh, yep, X over L. Um, and then I'm going to have a, what am I going to have in here? Um, lambda. Right. Right, I just realized something with me being super lazy. If you use the approximation of sine theta is roughly equal to uh, x over lambda, and you use that formula in your formula sheet somewhere, it's not exact. I mean, it's an, it's an approximation. Um, but, I mean, it's close enough, so I'm going to use it. You can, see, you can use what's in the answers. And, uh, I mean, I've done heaps of these questions before where I've got videos of... I'll, sh I'll explain how you do it the other way. Um, so maybe, really, we should have found out that angle. So that an that maximum angle, I'll just do it up here. Um, we have the, what is this? This is going to be the opposite. This is going to be the adjacent. It's going to use tan. Um, how could we do it? Tan, theta, because it's not taking long, opposite over adjacent. So theta is going to be equal to tan. Inverse, what is the uh, opposite is 5 over 20. So it's essentially tan inverse of a quarter. Um, which if you do that on your calculator really, really quickly, it's 14, uh, 14 degrees. Um, there we go. And you could have put that in, um, but I'm not going to because, I mean, I already know the answer. And I already know this is a very kind of-ish, good-ish uh, approximation. I mean, it's not a large, large angle. Um, anything below or above 10 degrees, it tends to go off by quite a bit, uh, but not by heaps. Anyway, so I know that this N is equal to 2.3 and I'll put a roughly approximate. So, somewhere here, well, it's, it's not quite, it hasn't got quite to the next, uh, to the 2.5, which is like the, I don't know, um, next nodal, nodal point. Um, so we can say two bright spots, bright spots um, below, and symmetrically, symmetrically to above, I'm getting lazy now, above, um, so five, uh, what do you call it? Loud spot, <laughs> bright loud, L-O-U-D, uh, five loud spots, spots uh, in total, I hope you can see, it. oh man, five loud spots, in total, including um, the central central antinode. That's why antinode. Antinode. Right, that'll do. Um, yeah, actually, if the angle is going to be greater than 10 degrees, you shouldn't really be doing the sine is approximately equal to uh, x over l. You should really be using the tan and then working backwards, instead of having x over, so I've got x over l in here, um, I should have used sine theta, but I got lazy and just wanted to do it quickly. It ended up being longer, because I had to explain everything. Um, right, James and Tara find six identical speakers and line them up half a meter apart, so they've got a diffraction grading, or a pseudo diffraction grading. Um, they play 2.5 uh, hertz, what's that, 2,000? 2.5 eta, oh, 2.5 eta, that's 2,500. Um, walk along A, B. Describe and explain the difference in a loud and quiet sound pattern they hear as they walk along the line. Compare it to when there were only two sources of sound. So this, I'm pretty sure, is the same as the 2000... And when was the last time I marked this for NCQA? 2018, question 1D, pretty sure. Um, they use light instead of sound, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and I would guess that this is probably an E question. Let me scroll down. Ah, oh, it totally is. Um, I will chuck in the description a video to a Khan Academy video that amazingly explains this better than any explanation I've ever come across um, graphically. But in terms of how it works, any point that's not an antinode, so you've got an antinode, you have a node here, you've got an anti uh, node here, you've got an antinode, oh, yep, so on and so forth. 
any point that's not an antinode, all these other speakers, so if you like, I don't, know, I don't even know why I'm explaining it because there's a video in, in the description, but anyway, this will be out of phase by half wavelength. I should have gone to the antinode, what am I doing? Um, okay, just check the video in the description. It explains it amazingly. I'll pause it and write it out. Um, but yeah. Right, so I said each loud spot will be louder as there are more speakers um, constructively interfering. Um, the pattern of loud and quiet will become more distinct. I'm quite sure how to word this. As anywhere where the path difference is and isn't n equals one, there will be destructive interference from all uh, from the other speakers. So any any point where you're not on antinode, all the other speakers sort of somehow met well not magically, but they somehow combine to completely destructively interfere. Um, so you just literally get these bright spots with nothing in between, or loud spots with nothing in between. Um, and I mean, ears can still hear it. Um, the loud, the anti, uh, was it anti nodes? I put loud and nodes quiet um, will be further apart as D separation has increased. I got a bit confused. I was trying to say D has decreased up here, but you got it all backwards. But anyway, uh, right. Explain the effect on space. Oh, effect on spacing the loud and quiet spots along the line of AB if James and Tara played a higher frequency of sound um, through the speakers. So, I mean, we've got the formula N lambda equals uh, D sine theta. If frequency increases, wavelength decreases. Um, if wavelength decreases and everything else, else remains the same, the angle will decrease, but not linearly. It'll decrease um, like with respect to the sign of the angles. I'll, I'll pause it and write it out. All right, so I said, if frequency increases with constant velocity, um, lambda will decrease from the formula in lambda equals T sine theta. Decrease in wavelength will, uh, and later will, this should be cause a decrease in the sign of the angle. Um, I mean, yeah, anyway, decreasing the angle and reducing the space of the quiet, uh, the loud and quiet spots. I just used sign of the angle because a few years ago, kids got pinged for, I mean, it's not a linear relationship, it's a like sign relationship. So yeah, just be careful with that. Anyway, 